Hello again and welcome back to our uh, series of meditations on the book of Exodus. Uh, last time we talked about the uh, plagues of Egypt and, and God's lessons in those plagues. And, and one of the things we noticed, the last plague especially, was uh, the, the death of the firstborn. And that's what I want to talk about today, the firstborn. What, what does it mean? to be God's firstborn. Um, in Exodus chapter 13, God gives a lot of regulations for firstborn people and animals. That can be rather confusing if you do not know that uh, in Bible times uh, there was so much uh, significance attached to the firstborn. Uh, the, the firstborn had the preferred position, the position of honor in a family. They were entitled to double the inheritance uh, the other children were entitled to. They were uh, entitled also to a special blessing, a blessing of the firstborn, uh, an even better blessing than, than other children were entitled to. Uh, a parent may have preferred a younger child and yet the blessing and the inheritance went to the firstborn. Uh, that happened, you remember, with Jacob, uh, who, who preferred Joseph and Benjamin, his younger sons, to his older ones because they came from a, from a favorite wife. But uh, nevertheless, the firstborn was to receive the, the biggest inheritance. That's the way it was. It's, it seems rather strange to us in our day, probably. Uh, in most of our cultures, uh, the firstborn does not receive preferential treatment. Uh, but that's the way it was. And departures from that norm were rather significant. In this culture, then, it was noteworthy that God said to Israel, you are my firstborn. You are my firstborn. He was saying a lot when he said that. But you see, Israel was not firstborn, and this, is, this was the unusual part. Israel was not firstborn by any sort of natural order, but by adoption. Remember God's choosing of Abraham. It was not by anything who, anyone who Abraham was, anything that Abraham did that God chose him, but God just decided to choose and bless him. And that's what God says to Israel now. You are my firstborn. I have chosen you to bless you. And, and, and in fact, uh, Moses warned the people on God's command, do not say to yourself, the Lord has brought me here because of my righteousness. It is not because of your righteousness that the Lord God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff-necked people. You are adopted, in other words, Moses was saying. Your inheritance comes by, God, comes by God's grace and not by what you deserve, not by your intelligence, not by your beauty, not by your ability to impress God. Your inheritance comes by God's grace. That's why you are God's firstborn. Now, what has happened since that time is that God regards as his firstborn all people who have accepted, who have believed in and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's who God calls his firstborn. That doesn't mean that, uh, that we who believe in Jesus are any better than anybody else. Uh, by nature, we're not. We're only better because God makes us better. We're, we're better because God blesses us as his firstborn. Uh, and God offers that to you and to your neighbor, and that's why we're in this business, isn't it? That's why we're in these ministries that we're in, 
to spread that news that God wants to make you and give you the blessing that he gives firstborn. Don't live like a beggar when you can enjoy so much more. Uh, sign up for eternal life, an inheritance that won't spoil, fade, or perish. There's a little catch, however, and we need to be clear about this, that, in, that uh, not in becoming one of God's firstborn, but in doing what and doing and how you act and how you live after you become one of God's firstborn. Once you have received God's grace, God's grace is freely available to everyone, but once you have received God's grace, what will you do with it? What will you do? How will you live? How will you spend your life? Once Israel was adopted, they became responsible for living as adopted children in obedience to God. By, by right, their lives were forfeit to God, but God didn't want them to die so much as he wanted them to live for him. And so it is for all who have been granted life through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. All those who are covered by the sacrifice are now invited to present themselves as living sacrifices for him. Paul put it like this, present your bodies as living sacrifices. And that means like Old Testament Israel, each of us who confesses Jesus Christ must continue to, to set ourselves apart for service to God every day. We feel the impact of sin, even though we're Christians perhaps, but we feel the impact of the continuing impact of sin in our lives. But what the Bible tells us is that we are not to live as bound by sin. It's just as Israel was not, once they escaped slavery, once they went into the promised land, they were no longer to live as slaves, but they were to live as free. And uh, so, so God also wants us today, take advantage of opportunities, take advantage of everything that God gives you to, to live in and to enjoy your freedom. Take advantage of worship opportunities. Take advantage of learning opportunities. Take advantage of fellowship opportunities. Whatever helps you to live in the freedom with which God has blessed you. Um, and, and do the same for your children. Help them and reinforce these lessons for them day by day. What is it that God calls us to now that he has set us free? What is it that he calls us to? And how can we improve our service to him? That'll make you stronger for the wilderness times ahead. May God help each of us in that journey. Let's pray. Father, what an unfathomable blessing it is for, to be called your firstborn. We know that we don't deserve your grace, but we enjoy it. We treasure it. And we ask that we may do the things that you want for firstborn adopted sons and daughters to do. May we live in constant obedience to you, and may our lives grow ever richer in the freedom with which you have blessed us. In Jesus' name, amen.